Still straight three, so that means we do need a little bit more gain, Neil. But then we run into... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mrs Thatcher was due to address Yorkshire's Conservatives last Thursday, and Yorkshire's Conservatives were leaving nothing to chance. The fabrics were tastefully coordinated, the lighting minutely adjusted. There were enough flowers to stock a small florist's. If the atmosphere at Harrogate's Royal Hall seemed reminiscent of a coronation, that was hardly surprising. For this was a modern political rally, ticket only, television dominated, and designed to avoid the sort of scenes we used to associate with elections. Keep your seats, please. Keep calm. We'll soon get rid of these eccentrics. In the 1960s, elections appeared more noisy, more passionate, and occasionally more violent. Politicians both endured abuse and dished it out. Who have come here for a serious political... Serious with you talking? <laughs> I must ask you to sit down, sir. Or I, to I have to ask you to leave. That is to say, if you are a little boy and not a little girl. Do you think they're as enjoyable as they used to be? Well, that's a difficult question to ask an old gentleman because I find them less enjoyable. But then at 75, you find other things less enjoyable too. It's always better to do a job well rather than do it badly. I believe that we can say quite honestly to the country, we have done nothing. Not only in punishment. Now, I saw you at the beginning of the week. You've been with me ever since. <laughs> Using for <laughs> I never wasted much time on those who were just simply mickey-taking. You just took the mickey back and said, oh, I nearly said the wrong word there, <laughs> B.O. And the funny thing was when they used to increase the prescription charges, double the prescription charges as they did after 59, these weren't remitted again in the pre-election handout that they used to give. Thank you very much. Quiet, please. I'm afraid your aim is no better than your material, my friend. If they were just shouting or drumming or making a noise, I mean, you just sort of took them on. But uh, mainly, I found it very helpful to invite them to. You know, I, sorry, I couldn't hear. I'll say it again, and then you come back. Even your conservative leader described Rhodesia as a police state. You wouldn't last long there, my friend. Now then. My friend, we do not support savages. We just allow them to come to our meetings, that's all. Nowadays, the political managers are more fussy about who comes to their meetings. In addition to a union jack, everyone who saw Mrs. Thatcher in Harrogate last Thursday was issued with a Maggie Inn sticker. To get a ticket, you either had to be a card-carrying conservative or to have had a party member vouch for your good behaviour. It's almost like a Miss World contest now, to be truthful. Except they'd all look horrible in bikinis, wouldn't they? It's got much more like that, whereas in the 60s, which is not all that long ago, we were still arguing about issues and about local people. And I think television has wrecked all that. Why did it double from 600,000 in 1973 to nearly one and a half million in 1977? Fighting, what are you fighting for? You're fighting for audiences. Of course not. 
You're not fighting for politics or democracy. What are the other people fighting for? They're fighting for advertisements. They're not fighting for politics. It, it will destroy democracy. It will destroy everything that elections are supposed to be about. The other side of that is that it shows up the ranter. If you record a man ranting like an old-fashioned soapbox orator, I think that it's a very good thing that he should be shown up because uh, it's a very bad form of oratory or, or even de democracy, if one cares to use that overused word. Mentioning no names. Mentioning no names at all. <laughs> the Prime Minister went to a meeting at... Uh, no, 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 let's, let's, let's examine the matters carefully. Yes, less carefully, we must all give her her due. That's what I... That's right, isn't it? <laughs> now. Michael Foote's platform style earned him the reputation of being one of Britain's greatest modern orators. But the technique which rouses audiences in the hall may not be the best way of appealing to the voters at home. Behind the scenes at Harrogate, a technician man's Mrs Thatcher's secret weapon an American auto-prompt device, which feeds the text of the evening speech via hidden monitors onto a pair of glass screens in front of the Prime Minister. Um, and the idea is, you see, you don't have to look down at your notes, but you gaze into stars looking uh, very sincere, and the public are taken in. Uh, I think it's a perfectly legitimate device, but it only slightly amuses me. You're not planning to use one? I certainly will never use one. I hate gadgets. I saw Reagan do that in, in London. It's all a lot of nonsense. You wouldn't have had one? No. You get a better impression of sincerity, the media advisors say, if you appear not to be reading. It's coming straight from the heart. I'm not sure that's true at all. It just means uh, uh, you've uh, spent eight hours trying to rehearse it, don't you? Everything in our programme has been costed and is included within the programme of our national plan, within our tightly controlled and rigidly expanded government expenditure programme for the next five years. Michael knows we have no plans for expenditure in Vietnam. The day after the Harrogate rally, the Prime Minister's campaign moved south to an industrial estate near Reading. It was a perfect illustration of the way television has transformed electioneering. Here there were not even any party faithful. The only crowd to greet Mrs Thatcher was a stage army of photographers and TV crews ferried here by Conservative Central Office. We even outnumbered the factory's employees. Yes, but somebody's come and knocked all his bits over. Oh, I am sorry. We'd been brought here not to ask questions, but to observe. And it was at this point, in his eagerness to convey the scene, that your correspondent stepped out of line. This is what it's like being on the campaign trail with the Prime Minister in 1983. It's as far removed from traditional campaigning as it's possible to imagine. There aren't many voters in sight, but there are hundreds of members of the media who swarm around the Prime Minister, follow her every move, and the idea from the Conservatives' point of view is to get the best possible exposure on the TV news that evening. <laughs> After this brush with the Prime Minister, I retreated to my allotted position as an observer. If she ever consulted me, which is unlikely, I would say, Margaret, get rid of all your stuff. Just be yourself. And I would say the same to the others too. Michael, Slightly the problem because he can't, he, he won't finish a sentence. He's, he's made his point very well, then he goes off into orbit. Then he's healer, yes, straight down the middle of the road. Good. Good. Well, nice. Labour's election campaign seems less well organised than the Conservatives. When Dennis Healy turned up in East London the other night, he was greeted by a handful of local supporters. There were no television cameras apart from our own despite the fact that the party had gone to the trouble of erecting the travelling red set 
designed to identify their campaign on television. Willie Whitelaw, Jim Pryor, Francis Pym, even Peter Walker, off to the knacker's yard. Here was a meeting, open to the public, addressed by one of the most controversial politicians in the country, yet there was no heckling and little excitement. Did you used to enjoy heckling? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, really, for an old pro like me, the best part about electioneering is when they start telling you what they want you to tell them about. Oh, yeah, sure. I miss that very much, and that you've killed. We've got a wonderful piece of film of you um, hitting a picture of Hal Wilson with your stick. Wasn't it fun? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it fun? I look back on that with the greatest of satisfaction. Seventeen years later, the style of electioneering has changed out of all recognition. Quantel make television equipment, and a visit to their factory was one of Mrs. Thatcher's last election appearances before she went to Williamsburg. The location dictates the pictures. There are no hecklers, and the risk of bad publicity has been cut to a minimum. The television image is modern, prosperous and prime ministerial. It concentrates uh, um, interest upon the leader rather than upon the cabinet and the shadow cabinet rank people. And I think that uh, our own form of democracy quite rightly favours the latter rather than the former. I mean, our prime ministers are not presidents and ought not to be treated as presidents. In retrospect, it was entirely appropriate that Mrs. Thatcher should choose to end her week's campaigning at the offices of Quantel, a firm which specialises in the manipulation of images on television, because increasingly elections are dominated by television coverage, not just how good a candidate looks on the screen, but in the way television manipulates the whole day, the way in which candidates have to structure all their appearances to fit in with television bulletins and to get the maximum exposure. So it looks like being goodbye to the days of the big rallies and the hecklers and hail to the days of the television image makers.